dear friends, out here at the bus stop, sun's going down. And uh, let me just right off the bat say that what I'm going to share today is for the person who, with all their heart, wants to get to know the Lord better. Wants their relationship to grow and become closer and to find Him out. Let's say, doesn't the Bible say that His ways are unsearchable and He is beyond finding out? There's that much to Him, you know? He's wonderful. And so we can always be like little children before Him. Always something to learn about the Lord. So that is what I'm sharing for that person and um, in hopes and prayer that it would m help you and give you hope. And uh, so I was looking back through some journals today and let me say, last night I was speaking with a dear friend on the phone about this particular subject and I didn't realize that I had shared about this before. But when I was going through my journals today, old journals, I realized I had shared about it in different pieces. So I thought, I'm going to reshare this and kind of put it all together and pray that the Lord turn it out right. And um, it's got to do with this scripture, which I'm sure you all have heard. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And back some years ago in my journal, I have written, and I remember, when I had come to the Lord and said, Lord, I want to know more about this scripture. I want to understand it more. Like, I don't want to just understand this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the way I've always heard it, you know? And the way I'd always heard it would be from growing up in church, um, devotionals, maybe teachings on YouTube or something. Um, I didn't want to stop there, you know? I wanted to get... An answer about this scripture straight from the horse's mouth. You ever heard that before? It's a phrase from the South. You know, you say, if you want to know the truth about something, go straight to the horse's mouth, to the one who said it. And that's what we can do, not just with this scripture, but every scripture. Go straight to the horse's mouth. I don't mean to call you a horse, Lord, but you know what I'm saying. He knows what I'm saying. So, um, that's what I did. And I had to wait. That's something I found. Any scripture, anything you want to know in your word there in the Bible, you can go to the Lord about it. For the whole Bible was written by him through the hands of people just like me and you. You know? He works through people. So, yeah, you can do that. And that's what I went to him about on the scripture. And I can already tell it took me four minutes to say that. I pray you have patience with me today. This might be a little long. So, like I said, I went to them, and then I, I had learned, you know, over time and doing this with many scriptures that I had to wait a while to get more understanding. And what would happen is that not a certain amount of time, it might have been two or three days, and a little piece of understanding would come what I was looking for. He would open my understanding a little more. And I'd go, whoa, you know, like that. And then I'd say, all right, Lord, if that's you, because I still wasn't familiar with 
his voice, you know, how he taught me this and that, I'd say, please, you have to show me more. And that's what he does. Our understanding, he opens more and more and more. That we might begin to see things from a bigger perspective the way he does, you know. And um, I'm thinking now about the scripture where the two men were walking along the road and Jesus had already been crucified and he had rose from the dead and he walked along with them down that path. And then the Lord vanished and they said, they realized it was him and they said, um, didn't our hearts burn uh, while he was talking about the scriptures or something like that? Is that the scripture I'm thinking about? Either way, there's scriptures in the Bible that you can find about him opening our understanding. Okay? And that's what he does. Now, Lord, help me to get to the point. All right. So, the Lord began to show me some things about this. He began to answer me. Um, over time. Excuse me. And I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've learned. Now, one of the first things that started happening, y'all, let me roll one of down. I'm about to sweat. Well, I am sweating. I'm about to pour. One of the things that began to happen. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of scattered brain. I think my fibromyalgia might be getting ready to flare up and it makes me foggy brain and scatter brained and I have a hard time. But anyway, so please he overlook me. Um, but okay, so I was like, all right, Lord, it's getting ready to be loud too because the bus is coming through. But I was like, all right, Lord, um, give thanks in every circumstance. I was trying to figure it out the best way I knew how. You know, I was trying to do it. I was trying to do it. And I was like, a circumstance would happen. And back then, for years, the greatest pain and toil and hardship of my life was between myself and my husband in a very broken marriage um, that the Lord did restore. But anyways, I was let this bus pass. Let me look at you. I'm gonna have to talk fast. Um, so something would happen between me and my husband. And I remember getting along with the Lord and saying, Lord, how, and I was angry. I was angry. How am I supposed to be thankful for this? There is no two ways about it. I can't be thankful for this, Lord. What do you mean? Give thanks. How do I give thanks here and really, truly, genuinely mean it? I don't understand. So, I remember that happening when I first tried to start doing this. Um, But as time went on, what began to happen was I realized that, you know, in any circumstance that came, whether it was my husband losing his vision, scary times, um, losing my grandmother passed away, who was like my mom to me. She raised me and sitting there with her in her hospice bed in her living room and right next to her about two feet away was my papa in his hospice bed passing away he passed away two months after her and they were trying to care for them and grandma's cancer had went to her brain and she was not herself and it was really scary hard times to losing my job, having no way to earn income when the fibromyalgia came, to, you know, my dad living with me for about nine years, 
who was a recovering alcoholic and you know he needed help to get back on his feet and I didn't know it was going to last nine years but it did and the pain and the hurt and the deceit and the anger and everything that went with that y'all in so many ways best friends stabbing you in the back in so many ways the Lord taught me what it means to give thanks in all circumstances. What it, a little bit of what it means, okay? Because I'm still learning about it. But in Numbers 15:39, we're told to obey the Lord's command. And it talks about humans are prone to go their own way and do their own thing. And I found that and become thankful for the Lord intervening so that I don't go my own way and do what I want to do because I don't know what's best for my life. And how does the Lord intervene but through the circumstances of our life? I used to be one that rebuked every, what I thought to be a bad, negative thing to happen to me, I would rebuke it and cast it off. And, you know, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name, and that kind of thing. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel any kind of way if that is what is happening in your life right now that you see the enemy in many different ways in your life and you rebuke him and everything because I also did the same thing. But what began to happen was that more than seeing the enemy and all these hard and maybe even evil, mean, adverse situations, I began to see the Lord in them. Yeah. Through these circumstances going on all around me over the past years, <clears throat> excuse me, I've begun to understand and confidently know that He is present in everything. Even if something came by way of evil, by way of the enemy, well, the Lord had already thought about that because doesn't He say, that what the enemy means for evil, he will make it for good for you, for me. You know? An easy prime example of that is the story of Joseph when his brothers sold him into slavery. There was nothing good about that. And though in that moment, Joseph might not have been able to rejoice. Over the years, Joseph learned that by the time that his brothers came crawling to his presence, he said, and the brothers found out who Joseph was. And Joseph had plenty of time to work all any anger or anything he might have had out with the Lord because he's a real human. You know, he felt those real things that we do. He was able to say, don't be afraid, don't fear. Because the Lord did this. He sent me ahead of you that many might be saved. And What I've found that might could help somebody, I hope, if 
anybody would be willing to think about it, you know, and go to the Lord about it. <clears throat> is that, you know, the scripture that says, seek the Lord, search for the Lord with all your heart. You know, don't depend on your own understanding in these matters, but search for Him. And I found that in every circumstance that comes and faces my life, no matter hard, no matter good, no matter what it is, y'all, I've learned to search for the Lord in it because He is there. Doesn't he say he will never leave us? And he, he told Joshua, fear not. I will be with you wherever you go. And that wasn't just a promise for Joshua. It was for me and you. And so wherever we go, when we come into a circumstance, we can know that the Lord is with us. And... There is always a lesson to be learned in and through that circumstance, that trial, that hardship, that lack, that fear, that anger, that hurt, y'all, What that loss, whatever it may be. There is something to learn. The Lord has helped me to learn something either about myself that needed to be worked on and I would have never known about it had this situation not come and pressed on me. I wouldn't have known how full of fear I was had not all these fearful circumstances kept coming to me. And the Lord showed me I was full of fear and that I lacked trust in Him. And He wanted to help me with that. You know, I wouldn't have known that my husband had become an idol in my heart. And that I depended on Him and looked to Him to fulfill me rather than on the Lord. If my husband hadn't walked out the door a few years ago and left me. So I learned that through that situation. There's either something to learn about myself or yourself. Or, or and both learn something about the Lord. Learn that he is a steadfast rock on which you can stand. Or he is a very present help in the time of trouble. That circumstance that's full of trouble. We don't know what to do. The Lord is a very present help there. And we find him out as a refuge and a shelter from the storm. And we find out that Peace can be found in Him when there's none to be found in the world or these circumstances around us. We find that He is a friend above all friends when we're lonely and we don't have anybody else to turn to. He can be counted on. And you learn that if you're in lack of say with money, things to do with this world, that He will provide and take care of you. But I wouldn't have learned that had I not been in financial hardship after financial hardship. I'd still be trusting in that job, that that job and that boss and my position was earning me a living rather than the Lord. I'd have never learned that had not my job been stripped away. Or my husband, when he lost his vision, could not work. And there was no income coming into the house. But my faith grew in the Lord through that because he provided for us through ways I couldn't even, well, I have not time to tell you.
just seeing if I had any scriptures right down I wanted to share. Let me try to wrap it up real quick. I found that I am able to give thanks in all circumstances, y'all. Because no matter what the circumstance is, whether it catches me by surprise or it was a long time coming, no matter what it is, I can rejoice because I have an opportunity to find Him out more. To get to know Him more. That my faith in Him would grow more and more. Paul, remember what he said. He said, I rejoice in all circumstances, hardship, trouble, affliction, whatever the case may be, facing death all day long. What was his reason for joy? He got to know the Lord through every one of those circumstances. You know, those, many of those circumstances or these that we're facing reveal our weakness that His strength may be magnified and revealed through us that we may be a light unto the world. The light of Christ living within us for the world to see and that we might, like the Bible says, comfort others with the comfort we have received. Well, when do you receive comfort? Is it not when you're troubled and afflicted and pain and hurt and sorrow? And I, I finish with this to say, in any way that I can find out the Lord more, I want it. Though it may kill me right now, I know when a little time passes and I can look back and the Lord helps me to see more and more, gives me more and more light and understanding on what was going on there. I know I'm more through it. And there's nothing above knowing Him. Paul tells us and Hosea tells us, let us press on to know the Lord. To know the Father and His, His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us press on and endure to know Him. Don't ever stop getting to know the Lord. Because John tells us that this is eternal life, y'all. To know Him. That's life. That is our eternal life. Is to know Him. You see why it's so important to know Him. And before the Lord and the integrity that the Lord has given me in my heart, I say that in every circumstance that faces us and touches us, we can find them there and we can get to know them more and we can grow to be more like them. And that is a reason to rejoice. There's nothing greater than to know Him. So, thank y'all for bearing with me to share that. I mean it with all my heart. I'm not looking, I'm not here looking to be liked or to be thought of highly or to be popular or anything like that, y'all. I take very seriously the words that I share with you. I do.
But he is life. He's eternal life. There's nothing greater that we can do than get to know him. And no matter what situation and circumstance that you're in today, you can find him. Search for him with all your heart. Call out to him. He will surely answer you. Do whatever it takes to find him. All right? And I pray that that be accomplished in you. That you'd know him more and more. That would be changed into his image more and more. And that any and all who would listen might come along with us. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And I love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.